So a few weeks ago, classified US documents were leaked on a Minecraft Discord server. I mean, how does that even happen? Imagine having access to like top secret Pentagon level intel, which you are required to never share with anyone who doesn't already have clearance. And then just posting it to a Discord server. The guy who did this had to do some crazy mental gymnastics to jump to the conclusion that that was a good idea. If Pentagon intel can be found through Minecraft, it clearly needs to be harder to access. So I added a new security keypad in Minecraft. Now no one will be able to get to the documents without already knowing the access code. What? I swear that was the right code. No, wait, hold on. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong! You're welcome, America. This keypad is perfect for keeping private business private. No one will be able to bypass this incredibly complex security system. So now let me show you exactly how I made it so you can replicate and bypass it. First, I'll choose a door to add this to, then decide where the keypad would go on the wall. For the visuals of the buttons, I'll use the new display entities. Big shocker, I know. There will be nine displays for the actual buttons, one for each number. I had some trouble trying to decide what block to represent them, but I eventually settled on smooth stone. And no, I didn't retexture them to have numbers like in the thumbnail. That was just straight up clickbait. My disappointment is immeasurable. I personally think it's cooler if the keypad works 100% vanilla, not even any resource packs needed. Each of the buttons is 2 pixels wide, so the scale of the block display will be 2 sixteenths, or 0.125. They display from their bottom corner though, so we have to use a translation of 1 pixel in every direction, or 0.0625. Then to get all 9 on the grid, we summon the first button 5 pixels in from the left, or 0.3125. You know, honestly, it is so beneficial to just memorize the decimal values of all the 16th fractions when you're working with display entities. So 1 16th, 2 16th, all the way up to 1. It comes in so handy for knowing exactly where you want to summon a block in relation to the pixels on the grid. Anyways, for each button after that first one, we move it two more pixels away, either to the side or up. So let's consult this little chart that we have. Two pixels is 0.125 blocks, just like before. After that whole grid is set up, we get to do it again, but with interaction entities. This allows us to actually click the buttons, but it wouldn't feel right if the buttons just sit there. So whenever we detect that an interaction has been used, the respective block display will be updated with an interpolation duration. This just causes it to look like the button was actually pressed. Speaking of pressing buttons, you should... Uh... Uh, you see what I did there? For the number readout, I just used a stretch black concrete display. Then around everything I chose polished andesite for the back plates, because it adds a nice border around the buttons as well as the digital display without being too over the top. To show the numbers that you type in, it makes perfect sense to use the new text display entity, which is so cool because unlike a custom name over an armor stand, we can lock the text display to one direction so that it doesn't follow you where you move. We can't use just one display though, because we couldn't change each digit individually by modifying one text display. So instead, I'll use one text display entity for each digit. That way I can easily modify them individually in the code. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the code, shall we? I threw all the command blocks that we were just using into a data pack so that I can reset the keypad with just a couple commands. In this data pack, we'll also add all the code that controls the number display and whether or not you typed it correctly. I'm not gonna try to bore you with all the details, so here's a timestamp for when I'm done talking about the code. Alright, now that all the idiots are gone, here's the general idea of how this works. Each interaction entity is assigned a value, 1 through 9, so that when you click it, we can uniquely pinpoint which one it was. When this happens, the first digit's text display has its data modified to have that value that you pressed. Then the system jumps to the next slot using a scoreboard, allowing you to click and update the next one. This gets repeated three times for the four digit code. In the last slot, after the number is inputted, the system goes back through and checks if each number matches the specified pin. If every number matches, the numbers turn green and a signal is outputted. But if even a single number is incorrect, all the numbers turn red and a different signal is sent out. The correct pin is hard-coded into the data pack, 
So unfortunately you can't just change the code on the keypad without going into the files. The location of the outputs are also hard coded. By that I just mean that when you get the code correct or incorrect, a redstone block is set at one of two specified coordinates. This is how you could activate a door for the correct code or trap for the wrong one. Oh no. Or you can use the output to activate some sort of defense mechanism like uh, this giant laser turret. For this example, I'll just open these iron doors when you get the code right and damage the player when you get it wrong. So instead of going out of my way to use a bunch of fancy code, let's honestly just hook it up with some redstone. I'm also going to add a command block that resets the keypad after a short delay. That way it doesn't just sit on the completed screen. I could add this resetting system to the data pack code, but eh. what I will do is add the correct numbers to the code so that we can actually test this. I'll pick the numbers 3, 8, 4, 0. Now let's reload the data pack and try the code. 3, 8, 4, there has been a tremendous oversight. There is no zero key. So I, uh, I guess I just won't ever use zero. Instead, let's try three, eight, four, six. First, I'll try getting it wrong. Nice. Okay, now let's try getting it right. That worked. Let's go. It's done. Now I can store anything back here and it will be impossible for someone to get access to it. <laughs> Finally, after all that hard work, we can say that we ensured the safety of the intel. Speaking of which, we should probably check and make sure it's safe. Not gonna get me this time. There it is. Do not share. Huh. Hey everyone, check this out. <laughs> <laughs>